Welcome back to the Malta Man Cave. I'm Keith. I'm Dave. And tonight we're going to be reviewing the spawn, the baby brother or the the baby son of yeah. one of the best bourbons in the world. Coming up. All right, so we're back. And tonight we're gonna be doing the spawn of George T. Stagg. So this is a slightly younger- Stagg um, Jr. Almost as good version of George T. Stagg. It's the Stagg Jr., as you said. So Stagg Jr., and there's some people out there that swear this is better bang for your buck whiskey than even George T. Stagg. I really like George T. Stagg, so I, and I, well, I don't want to reveal my hand. This is really, really good whiskey too. But I'm gonna hold my horses on what I think about it till the end. So, George C. Stag, this particular bottle comes in at a whopping 129.5 proof, so 64.75 ABV. It is non-colored, as it is with all bourbons, and unfortunately, you know what? Nope, it's unfiltered. So unchill filtered. So sometimes Buffalo Trace. They do sneak chill. in. Yeah, some of like like Eagle Rare and like Blanton's, and I really wish they won it. I don't know why they do it. It's like an extra step that I don't feel because you know with George C. Stagg and their antique collection, like yeah. GH Andy, they don't. So I just wish they. I don't know why they do it for some of those. Hmm. Anyways, um, George T. or not George C. Stagg, Stagg Junior. This particular bottle, I actually won off of Claire the Third. He was a subscriber, I believe. Anyways, he's a friend, and we talk, and he's on Twitter, and he's a good guy, and we made a bet. He's from Wisconsin, and when Ohio State played Ooh. Wisconsin in the championship game, we made a bottle bet, and obviously we know it happened. <laughs> so drink and, oh, I didn't even plan this. <laughs> and Ohio State beat Wisconsin. You can't see this, but that's Archie. <laughs> he's got Buckeye colors right here. So sorry, Claire, but we are enjoying this whiskey at your expense, so thank you very much. But I would also be remiss... If our other benefactor, our amazing subscriber and a friend of ours, or I about said George, Chris, also known as Santa Cruzin, so kindly sent this to us as well. So <clears throat> this is two. This is two uh, reviews. Santa, our I, last review. I love that man. <laughs> our last review, he came through in a big way yeah. again. Santa is so amazing. He's such a big part of the whiskey fabric. He's so supportive of like all the channels, but he's been especially kind to us. So again, Santa, Chris, you are awesome. We love you. Yeah, thank you so much. If you need my home address, <laughs> no, just keep <laughs> sending them to me. I I'll will, share. I'll I will share. choose how much I I share with them. I'm sending them home when we finish this bottle. Oh, I'm gonna good. give them. I'm gonna a pour. Taste. I'm going to pour some of this into that and send them home with it. Uh, to be honest, Keith sent me home with a 24 case full of <laughs> beer that's been sitting in his fridge. And he still has more to give me. <laughs> and a bunch of the Elijah, Elijah Craig barrel fruit. Yes, and a which bunch is of it. really yes. hard to get and really good stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> without further ado. Right. It's late in the evening. All right. Let's get so, into some whiskey. Yeah, start, start me off, man. Or I'll start myself off. Yeah. Don't pour too heavy. I won't need no, to. No, we can top stuff. us off, but these are actually different bottling, so they may taste different. Yep, let's so keep I it the same. It. And for the sake of transparent, transparency and authenticity, I don't want to... Is that it. really? Are we, hold on. I just want to make sure that we're, we're even Stevens, man. No, you need to pour more of that. All right. There you go. I was just taking it slow. I'm so not used to you. Dave is normally like, pours like all like three fourths of the Glen Cairn glass. Our last review, I I I got pretty heavy on it, so I remembered. I remembered this time, and if I had to guess, mm. and I haven't even asked Dave, this is going to be a, a really freaking high score for you, I believe. Mm. We all know Dave loves. You don't know me and hates his sherry. Although sometimes you like sherry, and we are absolutely. Before I keep blabbering on anymore, we are going to water this whiskey because this one definitely pays off and gets a lot better with some water and with some time in the glass. I believe this is aged about anywhere from seven to nine years. Um, it's 
older brother or father, George C. Stagg, is about 15 years, 15, 16 years. Um, but same mash bill, um, pretty much everything's the same except for it's just not, not aged um, quite as long. It might, George C. Stagg might have a better preferential treatment for which warehouse, the, the, the sweet spot of the warehouse is that they age it as well. So other than that, it's pretty much the same thing. <clears throat> All right, my friend, without further ado, what do you get on the, the nose? Man, it smells so fresh. <laughs> I put so fresh and so clean. It is... So fresh and so clean, clean. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you've ever used uh, Irish uh, spring soap. Yes. It reminds me, I feel like I'm in Scotland with a bar of Irish spring <laughs> in like a lock somewhere. <laughs> Just, just going to town with a bourbon. With a bourbon, <laughs> just, just rubbing myself down with a big bar of soap. Um, and then I, I also put it reminds me in childhood, um, opening up my dad's car, the leather interior sitting out in the sun. It yeah. was reminds. There's me. definitely a lot of leathery notes for sure. Mm. Oh. oh man, and I put um, spicy. I put that it exposed my unrefined olfactory, uh, my nose. Because it was so packed full of. Oh man, I just I can't even I out. can't even pick it out. All I all I could smell for the longest time was Irish Spring soap. You should have told me that you needed longer. We could take that. That was my it's only. Note. Oh, I I still feel the same way, man. So that that's oh, why you man. got in the nose. Oh uh, no, no, uh, no. I wrote. Uh, the sweet, all the bourbon notes are there, but it's something more, um, which is awesome. I, I would, I'm looking forward to take, I'm looking forward to the fact that I get to take some of this I'm home. I'm not sending any home with you, actually. No. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just because it's, uh, gonna it's going to be a great little sipper for at night. To, Man, to that is good. Yeah. So, anyways, you, I get you? fennel, which I get with a lot of good quality bourbons. And I put a little nail polish remover because this is really hot. Now that nail polish remover goes away with the addition of water or some time in the glass. Um, but initially it's fennel and nail polish remover. Um, I get rich butter pecan ice cream. Mm. See, I'm, I'm, I can smell all of these things as you talk. And almost like just like buttery. You know, the butter yeah. pecan, but just like kind of a buttery note. Mm. <sighs> Caramel, obviously, black cherries, specifically black cherries, not maraschino like I often yeah. get, black cherries. A little whiff of like if you were to open up um, bread, like you know like the, yeah. in the bag of bread and it's like, <laughs> I don't do that very often, but I feel like my childhood, I don't Middle know. Middle of the night. Keith, are, are like you up? I like to sniff bread. What's this? And then after that, I like to go <laughs> sniff my bread. Do a couple lines of coke, <laughs> you know, normal things that all kids, yeah. ten year olds do. What we all do. <laughs> uh, a little bit of black tea, brown sugar, maple syrup. I mean, it is amazing how much flavor is packed in there. And I, and I can tell you, if you don't have enough time to spend with it, it's so oh, powerful. I'm going to. It's so rich. It's so overwhelming. I can see how it can be. You know how you do your little pick. alone times. Uh, I'm gonna do Are my. You're gonna come up with I'm another. Gonna come, I'm gonna come another up review. Dave on second. Your own? My my my. I will not be posting it. <laughs> we Dave, can post it, Dave. Dave's whiskey corner. <laughs> Dave's whiskey corner. I no, don't like it. No, it's terrible. <laughs> uh, cherry wood shavings, almost like cherry wood. You know, yeah, yeah, shavings. Carpenter, just like the wood shavings. Um, cola syrup, not Coca Cola, but like concentrated yeah. cola syrup. Now that I get. Yep. You know what I mean? If like I don't know. Do, yeah, the thick. The, I don't remember what restaurant I worked at. A when restaurant. You would have to change the packs. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that was sorry. Uh, Pizza Hut. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly what yeah. it is. We worked there together. I got for a you month. that job, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and then right. I didn't I get you a job also at Capital Cleaners as a driver for a little bit too. No, no, no. That was just me. Just you. <laughs> All right, black pepper, leather, like you said, cinnamon, cloves, sweet, sweet corn syrup, like quality corn syrup, apples, and even like the slightest touch of grapes in the background. Mm. So, 
What'd you get on the palate? Uh, once again, I put all those bourbon notes. Uh, mm -hmm. Molasses really comes out for me. Um, what really stood out, and the best way that I, and this is probably my, my simple tongue, but I couldn't decide between the. It, it reminded me of a children's cereal, either Apple Jacks or Smacks. Mm -hmm. Right in between, smacks. right in between smacks. smacks and Apple Jacks, I couldn't figure out what it was, but it's that cereal bread opening up the bread kind of taste to it. Yeah. Um, very, <clears throat> it's it's very sweet, but not like what you were saying when you said not manicino. It's not that like it's sugar dark. sweet. Um, it's like yeah, it's ri like a rich sweet. I don't know. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, I, and then my last note was hard to describe. Um, I'm definitely going to look forward to, like I said, kind of coming back to this. And, and Having like a little I time. Said, I'm not going to send you home with any. <laughs> I'm just, just going to come over then. <laughs> Dave? I'm going to give you like a third Are you down there? At least. <laughs> Are you in the basement? <laughs> Dave's been really good about coming over. For a while there, he was crazy busy with starting up your new business with your dad and studying for the, te the licensing exam. So... I've been really appreciative that you've been coming over more. So. Well, I'm appreciative and I know that, that you have. I know that that's an effort to drive here and to get, you know, brownie points with Hallie so that you come over. So, I appreciate it. So, I'll send you over some. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So, pal, for me, I'm going to take another sip. Chocolate toffee, vanilla bean ice cream. Man, it's rich. You know, you can just tell this is like good stuff. And if it was just aged for a little bit more, I can see how it becomes George T. Stag, which, man, I wish I could score a bottle for, of that for us at one point. I've only had samples so far. Mm. Um, cherry cheesecake. A little bit of that rich like, yep. cherry. It's almost like I've never had black cherry cheesecake, but if it was like more black cherry. If that was a thing, yeah. Yeah, that's, what I, that's how, mm. how I imagine it would smell. Molasses mm. again. Salted caramel popcorn. I don't know. I've, yep. I've had caramel popcorn, but if you know, if there was like a little bit more of salinity to it, that's what it tastes like. Reese's peanut butter. So like the kind of peanut butter and yeah. like the chocolatey, bitter kind of dark chocolate. Almost if they had like a dark chocolate Reese's peanut butter. <laughs> that's kind of what I get. It's man, you're so descriptive. <laughs> it's like you you understand I, me. I paid Dave to like come on and just not give good notes, and so I looked at. So him. you look great. <laughs> I wrote hard. Dave, to, I Dave. wrote hard to describe <laughs> as a note. <laughs> Dave also only has five minutes with this, and I have like three months with these. With um, so. Sometimes it sometimes it's pretty easy. And sometimes you actually do better notes than me. So I like it's the mystery. Good. Yeah, uh, black licorice. A little bit of that spicy, spicy you're like red hot candies. Um, and lastly, like a little bit of touch of like umami savory soy sauce. Mm. Not very much, barely there. That saltiness a little too bit that of I like can, something, yeah. something savory. Mm -hmm. So that's what I get. <laughs> what are you getting on the finish? Mm. <clears throat> Long finish. Um, stays with me. I, I said black licorice like like you did. Um, very like I, like like you've been sucking on black licorice and it's just all over your mouth. That's what yeah, it reminded me of. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So good. <laughs> it's just all over you and uh, definitely a little spicy at the end for me. Um, has a little uh, and it's got. Flavor palettes all that range, um, you can tell that it's a good whiskey and that yeah. there's a lot of thought and a lot of um, time that's gone into it. You know, the heat, and I wonder if you even added a little bit, a touch more of water, if it would have like helped you yeah. kind of spread out the flavors more. Because this is one of the most powerful whiskeys that I've ever had. It's just like, <clears throat> hits you in your freaking nose and your freaking mouth like a freight train. It's yeah. so much power so much flavor all right so for me the the palette i mean sorry the finish is more of a medium to long it, it it's so powerful that it does stay 
Again, it's like chocolate toffee, black cherry cheesecake, molasses, salted caramel popcorn, and that red hot candy note, black licorice like you said, and a little touch of that soy sauce at the end just kind of trails out. So specifically at the end, it's, it's black licorice, the red hot candies, and a little bit of soy, soy sauce. sauce. And like the oak. Yeah. So. Boom. All right. I don't want to give anything away. I'll go first this time. Malted Man Kid <clears throat> Mark. Um, man, I'm going to say... Uh, I'm going to give it a 93. 93? 93. It's I thought, good. I thought. But you still like... You like the Cur Colonel E.H. Taylor a little bit better. Yeah. You love that whiskey. No, it was so good. <laughs> I need to see if I can find that for like a birthday or Christmas present for you. Since we since we always do Christmas presents. Yes, yes, we're we're in the habit of that. <laughs> um, for me, I'm tempted to give this a 91 out of 100, but I think if I'm fair, it's a 90 out of 100, which is a really good bourbon score for me. Yeah. Um, everyone, my first love will always be Scotch, but I love bourbon too. Um, I would say this is a to get in the 90s for a bourbon that was only age seven to nine years. Like this is. Some if really you ever get Big Papa frickin, Stag, if you ever get Big Papa Stag, really I don't know what I'm gonna have to rate it. You, you would 103. Give it, you would give it a 98 at least, <laughs> maybe a 99. <laughs> Only if you watered it down a little bit. I don't. I don't think if you added a touch uh, of water, you probably of, give all it of it. you Buffalo Trace uh, <clears throat> watchers, <laughs> watch viewers, <laughs> viewers, yes. Mm. Send us a bottle. Send us, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll we'll give you a good score. We'll give yeah. it a ninety eight out of hundred. Everyone, everyone we will totally watches, every, give it a ninety eight out of hundred if you send us some B Tech George T's that everyone just waits to hear <laughs> what I say <laughs> that I said hard to describe. <laughs> so, um really good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So 90, 93, 90. 90. Question of the night. Question of the night. Um what is and this is gonna it can be kind of broad. Closest near death experience, closest serious situation that you were either part of or you had a hand in or that you witnessed. What was the realest of the real, like when when things went hairy? So there is one instance in the military that I'm not allowed to talk about, or I could literally go to jail for seven years, so there's that. Oh, tell us. I can't. <laughs> on, on record, <laughs> on the internet. It's so like, yeah, top secret clearance. I'm the interwebs won't tell. They won't tell. So there's that, but specifically, because that's the first thing that came to my mind. I'm gonna give two, and I'm gonna do it really quick, so it doesn't drag it out too much. I used to live in Hollywood for a little bit, as you know, because you came out and visited me. Oh, I know this story. Right. When I was surfing out, well, and you know, maybe I don't know this story. Um, the water in California typically you get some of that cold water current, mm -hmm. and it's pretty cold and it's murky in certain places. It's almost like as dark as the Atlantic Coast. Now, there's different parts where it's lighter, but specifically where I was at, it's dark and you really can't see. Well, I was surfing, and it was like only the second time I'd ever surfed, and I was learning. And as I looked back, I saw a dorsal fin, and it was not. You know, like a little soft, elegant, rounded one like a dolphin. No, it was like jagged like I'm about and, to take a bite and, and big, see what you are. like that's a great white about 20 feet <laughs> away. <laughs> and so I literally, I have never, like I literally like was swimming so fast it was like I was walking on water. <laughs> because when you're out there, you are not in your domain. You are no. not the apex predator. at that moment, I looked like a seal. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why like when they do attack... They, well, they, 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 they don't know we're they don't know we're yeah. humans. They think we're a seal from up you right. know underneath yeah. Yeah. the water looking up. Yeah. So that and the second one is another one that involves the ocean. So I was in Hawaii with my brother-in-law Tim, and we went um, <clears throat> we went scuba diving. And so I love ever since Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea, I've been obsessed with giant squids and octopus, and octopi, whatever. <laughs> and so I told the guys like, oh, if we can find some octopus octopi that'd be awesome so the first dive we went nothing second second dive we went on he goes down about 30 40 feet and he goes down to like the sand i see him like like tugging on something and 
my brother-in-law, another, another instance of why he's a, a wuss, and yes, Tim, I hope you watch Mr. Bad A Fighter Pilot, <laughs> who's like been in war and been fired at and dropped bombs. <laughs> I'm mostly busting his balls, but he's, he's a very cautious. All right, so what happened? <laughs> I want, I want to drag this out as long as possible. I want to hear about Tim's failure. No, 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 no. I want to hear about it. So he's like all the way up top, and I think he kind of knows what's going. He's like, I'm not going. He's like, I'm staying up here, and I'm like, Oh, I'm gonna go see. I love octopi. So I go down, and all of a sudden he's tugging, tugging, and pulls it out, and all of a sudden this huge, I would say like from one end to one end, like wingspan, eight foot. Wow. Now, that seems. Like, yeah. It's not. It wasn't that big. Just yeah. like yeah. you know, yeah. tentacle to tentacle was pretty right. big. So, and it was like really friendly. He was just like playing with it, and it's you know it's cool. And so I, he's like, oh, "Come down, come out." So I went down, and I put my hand out, and he kind of like wrapped his tentacle around me. It was kind of just like the little, it was so weird, like the little suction cups as that was on me. And then all of a sudden, I think he got spooked. <laughs> this octopus, and all of a sudden he started like. <laughs> and he like started like sucking like putting his little suction cups on like my guy and his like mask and was like pulling on it and so my guy's like pulling it off <laughs> trying to get it off and next thing we know he inks and just pieces out so I was like oh that was crazy and my brother-in-law's up like 10 feet above like <laughs> like no what are you doing so we go up and I was like dude that was so cool like it was like wrapped his arm around me and everything so that night I'm doing research, and I don't know if I'm saying the right species or whatever, but I'm pretty sure as I was looking it up, there's only one type of like really main indigenous octopus, and it's like the red octopus. And apparently they can kill you. <laughs> they're very dangerous. I don't know if they have a venom or if they're beaks. They have so, a beak. Yeah. So I, but I think there's a venom as like the red octopus. I, I'm not positive. Death by octopi. Okay, this story may have like gotten bigger as it gone along. I'm, I'm pretty sure I read about it, and it was a red octopus that they can kill you. So like worst scuba dive, scuba dive instructor ever. Oh so, man, that's mine. Those uh, are my three. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you my two that are the same story. Um, the first time I was, <clears throat> the first one, I was maybe five. <clears throat> I had you almost died at five. No, I had just learned how to swim, or like recently learned how to swim. And our neighbors had a swimming pool um, out in mechanics. Oh. Buffalo Trace. We can fix that. Fail. Dang it. All right. Sorry. So uh, our neighbors had a pool, and they had a, uh, a kid that was a year older than me and a daughter that was a year or a year and a half younger than me. And we were all playing out. Their parents, their dad was at work. Their mom was in not being a mom, not watching us. Yeah. We were out by the pool and Jason didn't know how to swim. I was the only one that knew how to swim and his sister fell in. And so I was five, he was five, she was three. Yeah. And she fell into the water, went straight to the bottom. Oh my gosh. I jump in, pull her up. I can barely swim. I'm like swallowing water, thought I was gonna die. <laughs> I was pretty tall for my age, and it was a, um, it was above ground, so I could just on my tiptoes keep my head, but she was too heavy. I couldn't yeah. swim with her, and I pulled her up and I got her to Jason, and Jason pulled her up, and she was, she had swallowed a bunch of water, but she was okay. Yeah. So that was the first time, and then the second time that I felt, that I remembered feeling that way was when Kate, um, your daughter? Yeah, last summer we were all swimming in the pool and drowning is not loud. Drowning is quiet. You don't know that yeah. someone's drowning. And uh, we're all playing around and I'm like, I'm tearing up just thinking about it. <clears throat> I, I am the only parent that's paying attention to the pool, or it felt like it, yeah. because we were all busy making dinner around the pool, and um, I was talking to Ben, and I couldn't hear Kate playing anymore, and I look over, 
and Kate is at the bottom of the pool just staring up at me. Oh my gosh. And I'm fully clothed, ju just dive in, grab her, bring her up. She takes this huge breath when she comes up and just, she she was okay. This was last summer? Last summer, man. Man. Yeah, but like, it, and she was around the corner of a pool. Like, I, if she would have gone down the slope, I wouldn't have seen her, like, fall. That's crazy. Well, I'm glad you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, like, I have trauma just thinking about it. Oh, my it. gosh. Yeah. And Kate knows, like, she she wears floaties. She, she can swim somewhat. Yeah. But not, like, yeah. Anyways. Well... Here's to being a good dad and jumping in and saving your daughter. I like how. Yeah, so two water uh, experiences. So, apparently, stay away from the water. You if you're might, around me. You might die <laughs> from a Coast Guardsman. From a Coast I didn't know I was going to say that. When it, I was going to talk about something funny, but yeah. then that came to my mind. So, so yeah, much for ending this video on a high note. No, no, but drowning <laughs> is quiet. You never know. I looked it up afterwards. I was like, and then I read about secondary drowning, and you're yeah. like, all night long, you're like, oh, she can, yeah. yeah. I still have nightmares as a kid. There was this bully, and what was his name? It doesn't matter. I'm not going to publicly shame him, but he was a jerk. And he was like three or four years older than me, and like he just, you know, one of the kids that likes to like Did feel he good about. He literally came from behind me. What is that when you when you go like this, you go under their armpits and they come around? A and, uh, and you have them like the back. A of headlock. Head. Well, he came from behind you. A full Nelson. And he, yeah, and he comes up a under your Nelson. armpits and then curves his arm. Yeah, full like, Literally down, and like literally kept on putting my head into the water, mm. and like like <gasps> like. Yeah. Like I couldn't breathe. No good. Like, no oh good. Oh my gosh. Like, I it's like waterboarding. I, I, almost, I almost passed out. It's like, like waterboarding. I was the most scared yeah. I've ever been. Yeah. And that was when I was like seven. Yeah. So no don't be a bully and be a, very drink, afraid of the drink, water. Drink Junior. <laughs> so Stag Junior, I think we both really like it. I gave it a 90. You gave it a 93. Yeah. So again, thank you so much, Santa, for sending us this very, very awesome, amazing bottle that has a terrible cork. <laughs> so we'll figure out a way that I'm going to send this some of this home with Dave. This happened with the Elijah Craig, too. I know, man. Jeez. Every time he says he's going to give me a sample, the cork breaks. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> All right, guys. Like, subscribe. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Slouching.